Hello, this is professional video game expert Tim Rogers. You are watching Kotaku.com. Today, I am pleased to be playing Neo. When I was yet an amateur video game expert, growing up in the 1980s on U.S. Army bases as the middle of three children in a lower middle class Catholic family, by far the most extravagant Christmas present I received every year was a disembodied $50 check from my grandmother in Delaware. $50 was exactly how much a Nintendo game cost back in 1988, so my grandmother was pretty much the same thing as an uncle who worked at Nintendo, except she was a grandmother. And and she didn't work at Nintendo. My grandmother died when I was in high school. However, I keep her memory alive by purchasing a brand new video game for myself every year for Christmas. In remembrance of what my grandmother's $50 check meant to me, I approach this yearly purchase as a ritual. I look back at the games of the year, carefully considering the sanctity of the almighty dollar. I select a game that my nine-year-old self would approve of. I play a lot of video games, though I play most of them with my professional expert hat on. My professional expert hat is also, unfortunately, my bad time hat. Being analytical puts a body in a weird mood. When Christmas time rolls around, I yearn to put on my good time game liker hat and just bonker down on something I want to play. This year, that game was Neo, the complete edition for PlayStation 4. I, uh, also bought myself a PlayStation 4 Pro. I feel like this is generally a good way to approach the games I play as a hobby. Some games' as hype dissipates a week after launch. Other games survive as whispers for years. Neo immediately intrigued me when it was released in February. Ten months later, whispers persist in the Kotaku office. I overheard Stephen Totillo say, many times, as he prepared to go home, I'm still playing Neo. Heather Alexandra has, on six different occasions, uttered this exact sentence. Oh man, Neo. Chris Person saw me watching a Let's Play of Neo a couple weeks ago and said, Dude, Neo is extremely f***ing your Let's break down what exactly is so extremely hecking my stuff about Neo. I replay God Hand once a year. I played Demon's Souls in 2009. I beat the original King's Field on the Sony PlayStation. I have logged over 300 hours into Ninja Gaiden Black. My favorite video games check all of these boxes. Rich, dark atmosphere, sparse narrative, robust, simple melee combat mechanics, bold use of 3D space, crushing difficulty which rewards the player for paying attention. I guess that's that's a really long way of saying. I like Dark Souls. Neo is like Dark Souls. Look, I know it's a cliche these days to say a game is quote unquote like Dark Souls, though Neo really is like Dark Souls. I mean, look at this menu font. Also, seriously, it's pretty much exactly like what would happen if you colored Dark Souls the coloring book with a set of samurai crayons. Oh, hey. While I'm here narrating an internet video about video games, let me go ahead and unleash a controversial opinion. It's probably not that hard to make a Souls-like. That's not an insult. I'm not being mean or facetious at all. This is me expressing extreme admiration. The Souls formula is so brilliant, and the Dark Souls games are so good that any developer with even slightly less than enough money should be able to make a competent one if they paint by the numbers hard enough. You know how Koei Tecmo makes a Dynasty Warriors game out of, like, any franchise? They should just make Souls-likes instead. Come on, guys. Like, they made a Warriors game out of Berserk. That should be illegal. How could you make a Berserk game in 2017 and have it not be just Dark Souls with different wallpaper? I'm dumb enough to admit I'd buy that and play it. I would get all of the endings of that. Neo is a Souls-like with a samurai in it. You're not just any samurai. You're an Irish samurai. Whoa, you're based on a real historical figure. The game takes place in the year 1600. There's some supernatural natural magic stuff in the plot. It's told with a light touch. This kinda makes me wish Assassin's Creed games were told with a light touch instead of with a heavy touch. Even the voice acting is great. An ironic twist. For what awaited us in the Far East wasn't love. It was monsters and death. Souls-likes can get away with the light-touch approach to narrative because it serves the mood, and the mood serves the level design. The sparse narrative enriches the atmosphere is a phrase we could apply to a lot of great video games. As Ken Bioshlock Levine once said, The world is the best narrator. He wasn't wrong. About that, at least. Souls-likes relish in sparse narratives. A Souls-like level design is a rat's nest of interconnected passageways and aha shortcuts. Souls-like levels are pressure chambers 
characters whose dark moods exacerbate the shrillness of sudden action crescendos. If I had two hours to devote to this, I'd explain that Souls-likes are full of cheap tricks. And by the time I was done, you'd know that I meant no disrespect. Cheap tricks are the best tricks. Dark Souls games are such masters of these cheap tricks that the mechanics of the combat, which is always excellent by the way, are secondary to the level design and pacing in terms of impact on the player. Souls-likes level designs are masterpieces of pacing out big art surprises as you wander tensely through a hostile environment until you know that hostile environment so well that you practically live there. I love the Dark Souls games, yet within me has always been an itch which Neo scratches with a three-foot-long samurai sword. I want minute, meticulous combat bursting with mid-action decisions and possibilities. I am pleased to say that Neo is manual transmission Dark Souls. Anyone I've ever talked to at least once will tell you I have a lot to say about stick shift action games. These are action games which present us with familiar verbs such as shoot, kick, or stab, yet also require simultaneous mindfulness of particular decidedly arbitrary mechanics. This is a huge topic. The active reload in Gears of War is a good elementary example. Shout me out in the comments and like my stuff if you want me to make a one hour video about stick shift actions in video games. Neo adds a chunky layer of stick shift on top of Souls combat. First we have the key action. After you finish attacking, you see a blue flash. Press the R1 button during the flash to instantly recover your stamina. If you're coming to Neo straight from Dark Souls, this might sound game breaking. It doesn't break the game though. Key becomes Neo's clutch. It's a tricky little action you have to be mindful of or you will die when shifting gears. The most stick shifty mechanic of Neo is stances. You can hold your weapon in three positions, low, middle, or high, or as I like to call them, like it, love it, and gotta have it. If I were CEO of Coldstone, I'd change the names of the sizes to what you got, what I want, and what I need. The three stances have different properties which are valuable as game design and palpable as graphics. Look at the high stance, for example. My dude here looks like he's ready to run into a throng of soldiers and split the captain's helmet in half. The stance mechanic snows down upon the bedrock of Souls combat, warm-ups, cooldowns, space control, and turns each encounter into a dance of reckoning your opponent's intentions and enacting stances accordingly. Every opponent presents a sticky boxing match of bobs and weaves, changing stances and calculating timing. The shifting friction of sandpaper on the soles of your dude's feet as the spider web of decisions and possibilities stretches and contracts. I got multiple hats! I've only played Neo for two hours. It was a delightful two hours. I will play it all day on Christmas. It is my Christmas present from Team Ninja and from myself. Thanks, Team Ninja. Thanks, myself. In closing, Neo runs at 60 frames per second, even on the amateur PlayStation 4. I point this out because I asked a close friend six months ago if the game was 60 FPS, and he said, No, dude. I said, I find that hard to believe because it's Team Ninja. My friend shrugged and was like, Yeah, it's nuts. My friend was either a liar, or he didn't know the difference between 30 FPS and 60 FPS, which is worse than being a liar. I love 60 frames per second. It's the least number of frames we should accept for most seconds. If you're wondering why I need every frame I can get, let me remind you, I was born stupid. However, I will not die hungry. Video games forever, Kotaku.com.